join Forum IES Academy, trusted by hundreds of toppers, including IES Rank 1, Anudeep Durisheti, Shruti Sharma, and Ishita Kishore. Hello everyone, welcome to the series Key Concepts of Anthropology. The next concept which we are going to discuss is theories of evolution. Ever since we have been in school, we have been learning about human evolution and how there were certain theories propounding around the very idea of evolution. So what is evolution and what were the various uh, kinds of opinions, various kinds of hypotheses which were given around evolution. Let us have a quick overview of that. So the first set of theories, they are called as pre-Darwinian theories. Because when evolution as a concept springs up, that one person who comes to our mind is Charles Darwin. Second, Theories, set of theories are obviously Darwinian theory, the Darwinian theory itself. And then we have the post-Darwinian, also called as the modern synthetic theory. Modern synthetic theory of evolution. Now let me give you an example that how this progression slowly happened from pre-Darwinian to Darwinian and then to post-Darwinian. Pre-Darwinian is a phase where we have scientists like Lamarck who gave the very idea that bodily changes and bodily urge, basically bodily urge, gives rise to physical changes. Now the example which he used to justify this phenomena was of a giraffe. So where it was considered that an, a much older ancestor of giraffe was very smaller in height. But because it is a herbivore and it had to reach to the taller reaches of the trees when the shrubs population kind of dwindled, so there was the inner urge from giraffe as an organism to reach to the leaves of the trees which culminated into elongation of neck over a period of time. So he gave this example, that inner urge, bodily urge, ultimately culminates into physical changes in the body. This was one of the earliest attempts to actually try and explain how evolution happens. Then came Darwin with his very famous idea of natural selection. Now what did he say when he was talking about natural selection? he highlighted the idea that there is biological variation amongst or within the species themselves. Within the species. What do I mean by this? So if you know the classic Darwinian finches example, where he studied different finches and they were having different beaks. So though they belong to the category finch, but the beaks were very differently adapted to different kind of environment where they were living. So he found the idea that every organism has biological variation within, within themselves. So therefore what happens if environmental conditions are sane and everything is fine, there will be reproduction, but the resources will be minimal and therefore survival of fittest will happen. Only those who are the fittest in terms of their genetic com uh, compositions are going to survive. So when survival of fittest happens, so these individuals who have survived, they are known to carry favorable genes and they will be inherited. Okay. This is what he called natural selection. That this is nature's way of selecting the best survival genes out of a wide gene pool which is available in a particular population. Got a broad idea of what Darwin was saying? Right? Now if you look into the whole idea which Darwin gave, it is majorly based on two 
propositions natural selection and survival of fittest and obviously inheritance he seemed to totally ignore other kind of facets which might be at play during the evolutionary processes in nature what kind of facets am i talking over here he did not talk about mutation he did not talk about genetic drift he did not talk about gene flow and that is why post darwinian theories when these theorists try to understand that yes mutation can also happen and obviously when mutation is uh, a sudden inheritable change in the genetic sequence of a particular organism due to x y z reasons but it is always going to be inheritable so these factors were omitted uh, during darwinian studies so therefore we have this the present status of the most acceptable theory of evolution is the modern synthetic theory of evolution and it has been named so because it is a synthesis of all the concepts which were majorly given with respect to evolutionary front right so it recognizes so i'll just draw a simple diagram it recognizes competition as an ideal which was given by malthus okay malthus is very famous for his idea that population will grow in gp whereas food resources will grow in ap and soon there will be a mismatch the other factor which has been incorporated here is variation and then mutation okay the third factor so these lead to natural selection variation and competition as per darwin they lead to natural selection there can be genetic variation amongst the species and mutation which can be inherited right so all of them together are called as modern synthesis right so this is the modern synthetic theory of evolution which accounts for every possible paradigm which can happen during the life of an organism thank you